Hi, I'm Dave Epstein. Welcome to this edition of Growing Wisdom. I'm here today with Anna Fialkoff at New England Wildflower Society's Garden in the Woods, and we're going to be talking about native pollinators for containers. So Anna, you've got some great stuff here. I love all the different colors and textures, and I'm going to let you run with it. Tell us what you're doing. Uh, well, I'm going to plant a native pollinator container today. Um, I use perennial native containers for a variety of reasons. First, they um, are great for year-round interest for both people and uh, wildlife. Um, they require less inputs than annual plants. And native species are especially attractive to our native insects. All right, so give me some of your favorite tips when you're planting. When planting a container, I always want to make sure that there's adequate drainage. So you can see that the bottom of this pot um, actually has a hole in it, but it's plugged up. Okay. So I want to make sure that that hole is unplugged so that the water can drain out. If a plant is just sitting in the pot with um, out drainage, then the water level will rise and it will not do very well. It needs drainage, but it also needs adequate moisture. So what I do is I add wood chips um, to, my, to the bottom of my pot, I level it out, and then I add about six inches of soil, or, so that could be compost or potting soil on top of it. Okay, so give me some examples of some plants that you like to use in your container. I always have a thriller, a plant that kind of um, ex explodes out of the pot. I have a spiller, a plant that droops over the edge of the pot, and I have a filler, so something with just great leaf texture that can fill in. My thriller is Asclepias tuberosa, which is butterfly weed. This plant is uh, a larval host to the monarch butterfly. So it's attracted a lot of attention recently for that. Other, it's in the milkweed family, so other milkweed plants like this are also hosts to the monarch butterfly. Other um, good butterfly plants that are more host specific are um, the sundial lupin, which is important for the blue carner butterfly and then the spice bush plant, which is a shrub, and it attracts the um, spice bush swallowtail. So this is a nice plant. I like the sort of lacy texture of it. It actually is a mountain mint, okay. and there are many different species of mountain mints. This one I love because as a filler in my pot, it just takes up space and creates really nice uh, foliage. And well, this obviously flowers, is the flower significant, insignificant? The flower is not particularly showy, it's a little white flower, but what makes it really attractive to pollinators is its high nectar production. This is another kind of mountain mint, it's a hoary mountain mint, and it has wider leaves and it's even more aromatic than the slender leaved mountain mint. And caterpillars are going to eat the leaves on this or is it more about the flowers? It's more about the flowers with this plant. It's also very attractive to all different kinds of bees, including honeybees and butterflies. So great pollinator. Yes. So you've shown us the thriller, the filler. Now let's talk about the spiller. So a great spiller that people don't often think of is coral honeysuckle, which is a native honeysuckle vine as opposed to a shrub. Um, this, most people think of it as trellising up a tree or up a beautiful arbor, but you can actually let it kind of fall over the edge of a pot and it will turn up over time. And then you could, if it outgrew the pot, you could do what you talked about earlier, we could move this into the garden and use it as a trellis plant or something like that. You definitely want to move it into the garden before too long because these get really big. They get big. I've seen, <laughs> I've seen one around the corner at this place. Yeah. It's absolutely enormous. Mm -hmm. So one thing I think people need to remember when they're using all these pollinators, especially the plants that are good for butterflies, is that the caterpillars are going to eat some of the leaves, and, and that's okay. Yeah. You have to be understand that it's not going to look absolutely perfect, is it? That's right, um, especially with the Sclepias tuberosa butterfly, butterfly weed. Um, if you see a little nibbling, don't be concerned. That's usually a good sign. It usually means that the plant is performing its function. So this is absolutely fantastic. We've got stuff we can eat, stuff for the butterflies, stuff for the bees, and it looks good for yeah. all of us. <laughs> Thanks for doing this. It's absolutely excellent. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of Growing Wisdom. I'm Dave Epstein.